I spent over 1,000 days in Minecraft Hardcore, and I've built many dope things in this world, like this mega nether portal, the huge penguin, an extremely overbuilt slime launcher. So for this full hour and a half long movie, kick back, grab a snack, or just play this in the background while you play Minecraft, and watch as I transform this world in 1,000 days. This is Minecraft Hardcore. If I die in game, I die in real life. My goal this episode is to build a sick starter base, and my goal for this channel is to hit 1,000 subs by the end of this year. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting subscribe. First things first, boys, we gotta collect supplies. Now, I could walk you through this section, but let's be real, we've all seen it before. So, my first couple days in the world went a little like this. Wow, that was quick! Did some mining off camera, if you know what I mean. No, I, uh, actually did go mining for this. I found a village in a nether rune, so I situated myself and headed to the nether, which instantly scared me when I remembered that I was playing hardcore. I didn't want to die in real life right off the rippy skip, so I ran away with my tail in between my legs. I mean, look at this! I was making a parkour path just to avoid some hoglins. I was not not ready for the nether. I got home so spooked that the first thing I wanted to do was build some walls. That required wood, so I headed over to the nearest forest and engaged in a little bit of deforestation. In fact, I hate nature, and I'm pro-global warming, so uh, this was a pretty fun activity for me. That joke was not a reflection of my character. For legal reasons, please recycle and do not throw car batteries into the ocean. <laughs> for my starter base, I want to upgrade this village into a way cooler one. To do that, I had to first lay out the perimeter. I went with a simple wall design, where I just stack oak and put fences on top as if they were little spikes. In reality, this just made leaving and entering my village very annoying for me. But with my wall looking nice, my confidence rose and I headed back to the nether to hopefully get some wither skulls. Here, I almost instantly die. You can tell how worried I was because I paused the game to think of how I could get out of this situation. I was boxed in with five hoglins chasing me down. I was right to be scared of those bastards. I fired off all the neurons in my brain and came up with a flawless, perfect 500 IQ strategy run. I sprinted through them and to my surprise actually survived. I wish I could say that was my last near-death experience, but I still had a few near heart attacks awaiting me. I found a fortress and the lava in the hallway was super bugged out. It wasn't flowing until I triggered a block update by placing a block next to it. I was getting a bit impatient with how long lava takes to move in this game and promptly walked straight into it. With my butt of flame, I devoured one of my three golden apples to make sure I wouldn't die. There goes my apple along with my pride. I don't know if this is a common experience or I'm just super in lucky, but I swear Minecraft knows when you get two skulls and makes the third one super hard to get. I got my first two skulls within like 20 minutes and then spent over an hour just trying to get the third one. It took so long I ran out of food. I had to shove some mushrooms in a bowl to make some chunky chunky mushroom soup. And all the way back home and get more steak. On my way back I had a great plan to trade with some piglins. Just wait to see what happens next. No, seriously wait, I have something else to say first. I'm sure you're like, Katie, this is the first episode of a hardcore world. Why are you so dead set on getting these skulls? I don't know why you became a New Yorker for a second there, but moving on. I have big plans, baby! Too big for your little baby head to understand. Yeah, that's right, I wasn't using baby in an endearing way. I was calling you a little goo goo ga, -ga baby! I'm going to need a lot of blocks and tear down this whole village, so before I even get started, I want a beacon with haste. As punishment for making fun of you, I got smacked up good by this piglin. I mean, I really didn't know they did this much damage. I backed up quickly, surviving with just one and a half hearts and a little less confidence. I wasn't done yet though, I'm a greedy boy. I got right back to trading and dug down to the corner to collect my goods when a random piglin came out of nowhere attacking me. Luckily before dropping in, I had already mined out a staircase, so I ran out of there with neck breaking speed, surviving once again with just one and a half hearts. I finished trading and no longer wished to test my luck, so I got out of there and back to the fortress where I finally got my third skull. Oak and birch trees are always there if you need them. Unfortunately, they are some of the ugliest wood blocks in the game. I had a vision of greatness, dark oak and Burst wood. So I headed out on a quest to find them. I got a bunch of flowers on the way, and some thousand blocks later, I finally arrived at a spruce biome. For some reason, I didn't record myself going after the dark oak, which was next to an ocean with a lot of shipwrecks that had diamonds. So here's an artistic representation of me going to that ocean. I was able to make a diamond pick, axe, and enchantment table, so I went ahead and dumped some levels into my pick. Huh, when you say it like that, it sounds like I just took a really uncomfortable pause between the pick and the axe part of pickaxe. I got an okay enchantment, unbreaking 3 and efficiency 4 is nothing to scoff at, but I was curious and put my iron pick into the table to see what could be. I saw fortune 3 and decided to test my luck. I made a grindstone and de-enchanted my pick, held my breath, and took another chance. Fortune was on my side. 
fortune 3 actually, and I'm breaking 3, and efficiency 4. Now that's how you enchant a pickaxe. With my tools set, it was finally time to face the wither. I've used this strat since I was a youngin playing Minecraft for the first time. It's called the mole strat. Dig a really long hole underground, place the wither, and slowly back up while attacking him. This actually went super well for me this time. Normally at least a couple heads fling themselves into my hole, but with the wither defeated, I headed back up to build my beacon. The beacon that I did not have enough blocks for. I hit the mines looking for iron. Now that iron drops as ores instead of blocks, fortune actually works in iron, making this process a lot quicker. I got all the iron I needed along with a bunch of diamonds, and headed back to the surface to build my beacon and a full set of diamond armor. It was finally time to start building my base. I needed a lot of wheat for my cows, so my first goal was to build a farm area. I tilled a perimeter and placed in all the seeds I had. Looks a little weird now, but once all the crops grow in, huge fields like this end up looking super cool. I built a silo to theoretically hold my wheat, and totally left this hole open just to show you guys the inside, and not because I happened to run out of spruce wood right at the end. Next up, I want to make a booming market area bustling with villagers. Now, those of you with a keen eye might have noticed during my wall time lapse, some of the market was already built in. Yes, I forgot to finish the left side of my wall this whole time. Let's just pretend every time we look that way, the wall is already fully built in. Anyways, I'm gonna go with this cobbled ground style for my whole area. I basically just placed down my main block and then randomly mine areas and fill them in with other types of cobbled to add some texture. I recently picked up this technique of using gates as connector blocks rather than fences, which I'm very grateful for as I never really liked how fences look together. I went flower picking so I could make dyed wool for the covers of the stand. It's nice because it showcases that they are different businesses. These two stands would be for a potion brewer and a masoner, so I threw in random blocks that I thought would fit those jobs, like a smithing table and cauldron. I wanted to go with cute little alliteration names, so please welcome Patty's Poppin' Potions and Steve's Silly Stone Cuttery, and allow me to welcome you to the channel. Videos like this take a lot of hours, so if you're enjoying it so far, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. Also, let me know what you think of the video in the comments below. So I won't end up boring you to death, I do some of my work off camera. I added in all my wheat to my field and added a bit of road and details around the build to make it look more full of life. Now I'm making a little cart for more detail. Oh, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Sorry, my finger slipped. Check this out, buttons on the wheels, hey. Horse. Now riddle me this, how are we not able to jump on fences, but I can jump on this trap door on top of a block? Minecraft, hello? Now join me for this time lapse as we finish off the rest of the market. I have a few stories in the same category to share to you guys while I build. These are the tales of how unfortunate my life is. First up, I used to work at Starbucks and sometimes work the window, meaning I would hand out drinks and take payment. Now normally I hand someone their credit card back, then gave them their drink, except this one time. I went out with a double fister of items, card in one hand, drink in the other. I don't got time to waste, this girl has better put both her hands out the car window and take these back at the same time right now. Oh. I looked down and saw this girl had only one arm. I awkwardly held both items out as I couldn't back down now. Once she retrieved both, I said, thank you for coming, and reconsidered my life choices. Wow, look at that, my market's done. Next up, I was starting to have a bit of a chest monster happening at my home base. I no longer put them inside, rather all my stuff began spilling out, so I needed to build a larger house. This began the start of my homing section. Building this house went a little like this, bing bong, bing bing bong. I made these really beautiful windows with redstone lamps inside. This however took up so much room on the interior since I also needed a layer for redstone blocks to power them that I hardly had room for too much storage. I was able to cram these single chests in the middle for items that I wouldn't have too much of, and it ended up being more than enough for the first video. Good luck future me. I then wanted an enchantment area and saw a nice cliff overlooking the village. The thought is that enchanting is a bit witch-like, so whoever the enchanter is would be shunned from the village. So I made the staircase up to it run down as if no one uses it. I built up the stone to a rundown ruin with this tree growing through it. During this whole process, I kept noticing this rare group down below. They were too far to attack me, but I kept giving them mad side eyes since I did not want to attack the banner guy and have a raid happen on my village. I fought those big bull guys before, and they aren't fun. I finally decided to deal with them and noticed this little hole and masterfully led the banner guy into it so that I wouldn't have to kill him. Have fun down there, buddy. There was this big spot of open land. Well, I mean, it wasn't totally open. There were trees, but I think it's kind of lame to just leave natural trees around the village. So I tore them down and began working on a campground. I hate making custom trees, but I stuck to it making big ones, tiny ones, even tinier ones, where I literally used fences for the bark. Added in a tent, and I know I made this fire pit in my last video, 100 Days in Skyblock, check it 
out after this one, but I loved it so much I redid it in this world. With the addition of a bunch of plants and rocks, the campsite was complete. The village was right next to this really cool lake, so I thought it would make sense to make a big part of this village's economy come from fishing. This means I needed to add a fishing hut and a dock. Cue the time lapse, story part two. Now this also happened while I was working at Starbucks in the drive-thru. My coworker was next to me and no one was in line to take their order, so I said to her, bob your head with me. I began bobbing my head and looked over to her to see no bobs. I had planned out a funny little joke where once we both bobbed our heads together, I would say, now we're vibing. Like a complete fool, I didn't stop. Nay, I pressed on. I said to her, you're not bobbing. She turned to me and said, I have neck problems. I can't bob my head. <sighs> I've seen a lot of people use campfires as roofs, so I copied that idea and to be completely honest, Minecraft, please fix the bottom of the campfire texture pack. It's ugly, hideous, atrocious, other words that I would know if I was a bit smarter. But I wasn't about to rip it out, and I mean, it does look nice from afar, so I literally use it again later. Don't mind me complaining. You know what else really irks me though? How good some people are at building in this game. I looked up boats for inspiration, and look at this! These people had the idea to put an actual boat in a little boat so that the oars would stick out? Screw you. I did then copy that exact design. Link to the tutorial in the description. All that was left was a tavern. After a long day of mining, what's better than going to the tavern for a sweet taste of liquor? I don't drink, but I can like imagine that'd be something miners would want to do. Any hardcore miners listening in right now? You into drinking? Wait, miners as in the people who mine, uh cold, not children. <laughs> this does give us time for a final story and perhaps my worst accidental offense. So my sister was FaceTiming my mom and I looked over at her screen and saw my sister's new boyfriend at the time, bald, shiny, Head. My mom hung up and I said to her, why would he choose to be bald? And she looked over at me and said, he is alopecia. End scene. Now thinking back on it, that was an offensive question to begin with. I don't know why I blurted it out, but boy did I regret it quickly. If any kids are listening, remember, do not judge anyone's appearance like I did. But anyways, pretty basic design. I added these windows around the whole top layer, which I think looks nice. Similar design to the storage house on the bottom. For villages like this, you have to have somewhat of a consistent design so that buildings will have more of a sense of of cohesion. Now I do like building, but what I'm not is an interior designer. Every building is essentially empty except for my storage and the house across being filled with furnaces. I'm not a big potion maker in this game anyway, so I didn't really need a functionality to this brewery. And with that complete, that brings us to the end. Huh, I guess that was basically just a 100 days, except I didn't record everything, so I can't clickbait that. Tour time! I turn on shaders to be all nice and fancy for you guys. That's where the brokies would live, and now coming in, we have a nice spot to leave your horse that can have water, head, a signs to tell you where you're going, except not look at it from the side. Minecraft, fix that. Then we have defense towers for all the guards that I don't have, and you can look over at our brokies out there who are not in the village. Next up is our tavern for a nice cold, uh, don't, do, don't go in there. <laughs> we have a little cart for our coal, and a little further we have our mine. There's a mine shaft, which isn't very complete, but if you come up here, there's a nice overlook of the village, and you can sit here, drink your coffee, relax. Coming back Back out to the left, there's the campsite. We have a cute little tent, fire pit, and a swing to sit still on. Behind that, we have a couple houses which haven't been shown yet because it gets a bit repetitive building them. Here's our storage house, which you guys have seen. Another small little house overlooking the field. Coming around, we can enter the market where we have our potions, stone cuttery, a bunch of random little details thrown around the whole base just to look nicer and bring more color. There's our cart, our fishing stand, a bunch of villagers like to hang out here apparently, and our stage for plays. Coming back towards our houses, add in a nice little horse stable for our guy that I barely used. See you next time, bud. There's our silo, little sitting spot next to our fishing hut, where I added a crane to theoretically pick up any loot that the boats are carrying. Uh, this villager is just hanging out there for some reason, but look how pretty these boats with the lantern and the water in the shader pack look. Ugh, I love it. Cutting through the grass here, we have two more houses. This one again had the campfires up top and a little pen for animals. Nice little picnic spot. Oh, uh, I- I didn't put that there to remind you guys to like. Anyways, heading up top, we got our enchantment area with our anvil, grindstone, all that good stuff. And if we come back down here, we have this nice overview with this beautiful big bo- I don't know how to make a boat. I'll just, uh, sink down here. Don't- don't mind me. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Check out the view during nighttime. Oh, just all the lightings. Wow, beautiful. Peace. I transformed my end island into the most unnecessary build. An anime reference. But this took over 30 hours, so how did I get here? Well, I spent all my last episode building a starter base, which means my house was pretty, but I wasn't really set up for any serious projects. Of course, I won't be doing all the work. <laughs> 
That'd be silly. No, I'll be forcing my villagers into a long life of hard labor, which took a bit of setting up for me, but for you, it'll go a little something like this. Bing bong, bing bing bong. Okay, great, melon farm to trade with my infinite amount of villagers that I get from my villager breeding farm that I put into my trading hole for cheap trades. Yes, give me food and give me enchantment books. Thank you, my slaves. Finally fully equipped, I headed off to the end to beat the ender dragon. Why I oughta? Bop! I knew my build was gonna be big, and I wanna fly up to the tippy top, so I went exploring for an elytra. Hey, look, at end Oh, there one is. Can't happen three times in a- Hey, final- uh, <laughs> I found another end city. Pain. Suffering. Anguish, even. Life often pounds you into the ground and expects you to bounce back up into- Oh, hey, look, a boat! See, when I beat the Ender Dragon, I looked around and these long, black rods reminded me of something. The chakra rods from Naruto. You know, those things that pain and wacky lady who came out of nowhere at the end of a way too long arc was kind of an anticlimactic villain used on Naruto? Oh, none of you watched Naruto? Cool. Cool. Just building a big guy would be lame, though. What would look sick is Kurama. And let me be dead clear, I am not talented enough to build this by myself. I yoinked a schematic, link in the description, shrinked it down, and used Lamatica to copy the blocks. About 99% of this build is not me. You can probably tell which parts I alter because they look a little wonky. However, I love Naruto, and I wanted to build this, so here we are. Building montage, one of many. Let's get started. Like I said, the obsidian pillars reminded me of the chakra rods. Basically, if you get hit, you get pinned down to the ground and can't remove them. Them. So I'll be building some Kurama through the pillars to replicate that. Oh, excuse me. Yep, coming through. <clears throat> if you guys are enjoying this video, please hit subscribe and help me reach my goal of 1,000 subs. Also, leave a like and let me know if my audio sounds terrible because I just got a new mic. Wait, what's that sound? Alright, first paw and the head done. Believe it or not, I did not prepare nearly enough for the amount of wool I need. So, I got to grinding, collecting red dye, coloring my sheep, shearing them. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Yeah, no, I built a wool farm. I could make it bigger, but it's so much easier just to AFK here while I do other real life stuff, like, uh, pumping iron and touching grass. I don't leave my house. The awkward part of this build was trying to fit parts of Kurama through the pillars. Easy for the two front paws, but I could really only adjust a few tails for a couple other of them. We'll just pretend the ones that don't go through him are misses. Huge pain miss, he fell off, L. I like this shot, it's kind of a POV, you're the tail. Okay, that was a stupid thing to say. Anyways, two tails done, and I think we can all guess how many tails the nine tail is supposed to have. Six. No, not actually, that was a little gaff. If anybody who hasn't watched Naruto is actually sticking around for this. So to not bore you, building the rest of the tails went a little like this. An expected benefit of this build is the tails are actually a pretty fun obstacle course to fly around. Alright, if I land this, you have to sell. Uh, I meant to say if I miss this. And just like that, Kurama is finished. He's just a little dirty, playing in the mud with the Enderman or something. We can't just leave the build all empty like this, though. I want to add gates to the Hidden Leaf Village. Believe it or not, the Hidden Leaf Village is not located in the end, so Endstone being all over the place is not gonna cut it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cover this whole place in dirt. Luckily, the Endermen have been helping by placing the dirt they steal from my scaffolding this whole time, so that'll be a real load off my shoulders. Step 1. Collect a bunch of dirt. Though this process may look agonizingly long, I'm actually kind of a fan of mass placing blocks in this game. Just listening to music, filling in the ground. Pretty relaxing. Let's get started placing this dirt, boys, is what I'd like to say if a huge problem didn't instantly hit me. Endermen are stealing my blocks like crazy. Hope rent is low here with these crime rates. I'm gonna need a lot of torches. With few endermen left to bother me, I finished up a fourth of the island. However, I realized that the half of the island that I didn't do was a lot bigger than the one I did. And I was tired of placing dirt, so I strategized. I know I want to make the walls around the village, so if I just map out the circle first, I don't have to place the dirt behind it because no one will see it. First, I needed to make the door since I knew the opening would be a lot wider than how long the side of the circle would usually be. Looking pretty good if I didn't underestimate how many green terracotta this would take. And there we go. Doors. These are are definitely in the same spot they were before and I didn't have to move them because they were way too close to Kurama. Making big circles is a lot of fun in this game. It's always a game of, will this connect at the end? And it's a game I always lose. This time was no different. 
Luckily, I was only a few blocks off and fixed it up quickly. The gates go way off the island, so I need to curve down the dirt a bit so it doesn't look like it's just floating on a flat piece of land. I placed all my dirt, but going under would be a little too hard, and I really only care about this angle looking good, so I'm happy with it. And now, it's time to build up these walls. But I need a lot of terracotta for this. Running some quick calculations, I need just over seven and a half double chest full of it. It's time to get mining. It's great that his two makes it an insta mine because I'll need it. A full day later, I filled one chest and some change. Hours in real life later, I caused some serious environmental damage in these badlands. I don't know what animals live here, but their population has most certainly been affected by this. I got back to the end and placed and placed and placed terracotta. Makes a pretty cool time lapse, I must say. At this point, my arm was genuinely starting to hurt from placing and breaking so many blocks. I think I officially played Minecraft for too long. Funny thing is, though, I grossly overcalculated how many terracotta I needed. See, the diameter is 128 blocks, so I calculated the circumference and multiplied it by the 33 blocks tall I'm making this wall. Yeah, I thought I needed over 26,000 blocks. Turns out I'm a complete and utter idiot because I forgot the circumference formula uses radius, not diameter. <laughs> I'm an engineer major, by the way. I guess it's better. Better to have more than less? Uh, you can't see it, but I'm awkwardly smiling right now. Maybe scratch in my head, if you will. But putting that all behind us, let's throw some finishing touches. Put some trees around the edges, bone mail this a little. Karama's chakra kind of gives a bubbling coat, so we'll add some orange glass coming off him to represent that. And boom, we're done! A little more empty than I'd have liked, but I have to finish this before I have grandchildren, so it's time for the grand reveal. Let's do this in style, shall we? I must say his face looks dope with shaders on. I love how the light with the shroom lights gives off a really cool effect. However, the fog is super thick, so let's turn that off. Oh, also, I'm in creative because I wanted to remove all the torches and turn off Enderman spawn, so this is just a backup world. Let's get one more look at this bad boy because I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, replay mod, woohoo! Um, I feel like I have to talk through this because I already used the music on the last showcasing, so, um, look at me flying around there. Pretty fun, huh? Oh, good, we're done. Well, that is that, boys. Can't wait to hardly ever be in the end to see this. Remember to hit like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. My nether portal is pathetic. You can see how disappointed I am with it by looking into my black, beady, empty eyes. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't even build a little setup for it. No, rather I just slapped it down somewhere I thought it'd be convenient. Enough of that. It's time to upgrade this little guy into all of this. Yes, it's a reference to Full Metal Alchemist. To make the transfiguration circle, we're gonna need a lot of black concrete. But getting concrete isn't as simple as collecting it. It's a whole process. Four steps we gotta complete. One, collecting ink sacs. Sorry, squids. Two, crafting all the black powder. Three, stacking the black powder in water. And four, breaking said black powder, which turns to black concrete as it touches the water. There there is a surprising number of squids in the game, I must say. You don't really spend much time looking at the water, so you don't notice it, but boy are they bountiful when you need ink sacs. I'm not about to build a concrete farm just for this project, so I think the smartest way to do this is to just build a tower all the way to the height limit in a pool of water, and since concrete powder is gravity, it'll fall down for me to break. With that prep complete, we can go ahead and flatten the area that I'd like to build on and get placing the circle. A small problem I noticed right away is that a lot of where I want this circle to go is in the air, so it's annoying to build a circle since I have to keep placing temporary blocks to place my next blocks. I already know I want the bottom of the circle to be wart blocks, so I'm gonna go ahead and place all of those first so that I can place the circle on top of the wart blocks instead. A little deforestation later and we are ready to get to work.
Now, wait, wait, wait. I said I was gonna fill up this circle completely, and then I'm breaking what I placed down? Curious. I'm actually planning on having sections with this cool glass effect, which I'm sure you've heard of, so I'm pre-curving out sections for that. Portals can't be horizontal. Please change that, Mojang. So, to make a portal-esque effect, you can alternate stacking purple and magenta glass for seven layers. Then, with a light source beneath, we can create this slight glow. But before we can do that, we gotta finish up this outline. I'm gonna go ahead and mine out 8 blocks beneath the circle so that we have room for our layers of glass and our light source. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot of glass. Luckily, we got a nice big desert nearby with plenty of sand for the picking. Now with that all set up, we gotta smelt it for glass. Just gonna put together a furnace set up real quick, and now we should be getting glass in no time. Oh, um, that's a bit slower than what I was expecting. I think I messed something up. I'm gonna fix that and then AFK here a while. Yeah, we're gonna ignore that I just slapped all these farms here randomly. That'll be a problem for future me to fix. Allow me to sell you kind folks something. My subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subs by the end of the year, so if you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit that red button. For all this glass, we gotta dye it purple and magenta, meaning I'm gonna need a lot of blue, red, and magenta flowers. It just so happens I found this mountain with so, so many blue flowers. I'm gonna need like 10 stacks of these, so I'm just gonna be a little flower picker for a while. Gatherers in the prehistoric ages wish they were me. I'm gonna be using lava as a light source since it spreads out itself, so I won't need to mine yet another resource. You don't want to watch another mining time lapse, right? <laughs> Just you wait. I'll be honest, I was looking at the glass in the last clip and kind of coping that it looked good. You see, the problem was is that I forgot you need Optifine to get rid of those hard lines between glass blocks, along with the smooth glass texture pack. Yeah, now that looks right. The sides being just dirt look weird. We'll fix that. Yep, that definitely looks better. Remember what I said earlier about mining time lapses? Here they are. Gonna need a lot of nether bricks, and the easiest way to get that is tearing down a fortress. Alright, check. Next up, obsidian for portals. Where can we get that? In the end, right next to our build from the last video. Just gotta mine down the pillar, and check. Then some deep slate. Just gotta fill up this shulk. This shulker. Shulk. Still can't say that word. Shulkle box. Then we're good to go. Check. And finally, we need a whole lot of polished blackstone bricks. You could just mine pockets of blackstone, but then we have to do all that crafting. Ugh. You know what is already made of blackstone bricks, though? A bastion. With my little gold helmet to keep myself safe, let's tear this thing down, baby. Uh, we're gonna ignore how many shots it took me to hit this gas. Keep ignoring, keep ignoring. Boom! First try. I've never built a big tower, and I've never built in this style before, so please give me some leeway if they look a bit goofy. Fun fact, I based the shape of this tower off of a king chess piece. Now I just gotta build one of these at each of the four corners. The tower is to be based on a different nether biome. If you haven't watched Full Metal Alchemist, they are all about the law of equivalent exchange. You can't make something out of nothing, so the lore behind these towers will be that each of them collect the resources to make the nether. Then once the transfiguration circle is complete, it'll create the nether and allow me to teleport there. You think I sound really cool when I talk about anime. Thank you, I know. We'll make another wasteland biome by adding some lava, glowstone, mushrooms, and a little fortress replica. A warped forest and crimson forest will have their anilium, and then I'll just spam bone meal for some plants and trees. And finally, a soul sand valley with soul sand, bones, and basalt dripping down. With a bit of terraforming, I have completed my nether portal build. Ah, finally, we can get rid of this silly little thing. If you guys enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Bye-bye!
tired of having to travel back and forth between my base and my nether portal by elytra all the time. Let's all be honest with ourselves, elytras are extremely overpowered. It's kind of lame to just travel everywhere in the world with it and not create any other transportation methods, so stick around to the end of this video if you want to see how I turn this boring travel to a massively oversized slime launcher. As you could probably tell from that blurred out image, the ship I'm building is going to be very gray. That means I'm going to need a lot of stone. Nine double chests full to be sort of exact. This will be helpful. Let's get started, baby. I need you. Yep, give me that. Well, I blasted through one pickaxe and got just over a double chest full. I don't want to go back and forth between here and my villagers to heal the mending all the time, so we're gonna need some more pickaxes. Luckily, villagers exist. Unluckily, villagers are the worst to deal with. The easy part is adding onto the trading outpost. The annoying part is getting a silk touch book. Get a job, you bum! Okay, what is actually happening? He will not get a damn job. Oh my god. Let's go, dude. Oh, this- this took way too long. I won't subject you to me struggling to get another villager into his spot, so I'm gonna grab one more and be right back. Alright, a toolsmith. Hopefully, he'll have some helpful enchantment on the pick already, and I won't have to use up any diamonds. I really haven't been doing a lot of mining this series. I am running low. Oh, the pickaxe has the silk touch enchantment already. Great! L time loss. But we're about to waste a bunch more time, so whatever. Alright, so I finished up the mining, I got all these shulkle boxes here filled with stone. And a couple chests, still got some in it, but you know, that's a problem for later. Here is the damage of nine chests worth of stone, and because I can't stay in one place, there's a little more over here too. Just made an, my own cave system down here manually type of vibe. I'm gonna need a lot of dye for my concrete, so I'm just gonna have to be a little flower picker for a while. Really could use a farm for this, huh? Okay, collecting cacti is actually really inefficient. Really could use a farm for this, huh? I'm just gonna set up a small one real quick. Can AFK here a while. Wow, I uh, really thought these would have grown by now. I'll just... Yep, I'll see you guys soon. Way longer than need be later, the cacti actually grew. Not all the three high, but to keep it a buck fifty with you, I'm bored of AFKing. You ever feel that? Like you've AFK'd for so long, but you're still at your computer and just want to get back to gaming already? Yeah, the internet really manufactured all of us with ADHD. Now, if I had a quarter for every video in a row that had a killing squid compilation, I'd have two quarters, but it's still pretty weird that it happened twice. I headed over to my sheep farm and tried to dye a couple of the guys black. Emphasis on tried, because these two dudes would not eat more grass. They're just living that naked lifestyle, and I, I have to respect that. If you think there's gonna be a clip of me eventually dying them, you're wrong. It genuinely took so long, I couldn't be bothered recording it anymore, and just did it off camera. Swinging by my furnaces, I can quickly smelt down some cacti while the sheep get to sheepin'. I love this furnace. Blip, blop, blip, blop, blip, blop. Uh, I'm an idiot. I am a massive idiot. I was meant to make a bunch of cyan terracotta, but instead made a whole chest worth of cyan concrete powder. Two very distinctly different colors. Luckily, I got a bunch of sand and gravel stockpiled. I also left about a stack of cacti on the ground back of the desert, so we'll get on that front. Boom! Did that shock you? Well, good, because I'm shocked you haven't hit the subscribe button yet. Oh, you... You have? Um, <laughs> that's awkward. Just ignore this bit. I'm aiming for 1,000 subs by the end of the year, so if you're enjoying the video, please hit that sub button. In my last video, I mentioned that I'd be making farms in this video. We can all see that's not the case, and with every passing moment, I'm regretting it. But something I can't put off is a guardian farm. I'm gonna need a lot of sea lanterns, and these are a pain to collect naturally, so farm it is. I'm pleased to see the guardian farms are actually pretty small these days. I remember when I had to clear out the ocean with sponges in my other world a while ago. Awful process. And the worst part is that the farm is way more effective. Look at all this loot, baby! Link to the farm in the description. But I must say, building this farm was scary. I almost died. A lot.
Another farm that is a lot smaller than I thought it'd be, and I wish I just looked up for my last video, is a concrete farm. Let me tell you, stacking to build limit and then mining out the blocks takes a lot of time. This takes a lot less time. I went ahead and loaded all the shir- Choco- I- Shurkles, still can't say that word, with the concrete powder I'll need. It drops down to you in the dispenser and you can break away. Okay, it doesn't work when the dispensers have different colors, it uh, messes up what gets dropped, meaning your offhand doesn't actually fill up. Live and you learn. Materials gathered up, it is time to get building this thing. You know what that means. Cue the time lapse. It's a good thing all these mobs are spawning on what is essentially a massive mob spawner now. I don't have any way to get gunpowder besides killing the creepers that spawn, and I need it for rockets. I'd be very sad and stuck on the ground right now without these guys. Except when this happens, then they're very annoying. Now that the whole top is done, I'm gonna move on to the bottom. You don't need to watch me just place thousands of stone though, so I'll go ahead and skip this part. Building it went a little like this. If you have a keen eye, you may have noticed that the way I was placing those blocks and those clips is not actually possible. To be completely transparent with you guys, I'm using Litomatica's easy place mode to build this thing. Basically, I just hold right click and can almost like paint on the blocks. I didn't think about the fact that this is going to create a massive shadow down there, meaning a buttload of mobs are gonna be right outside my base at all times. Oopsies. I'm also thinking I might make the inside of the ship a storage area in the future, so I'm just gonna add on a cute little landing pad so I can fly inside. Now that that's done, let's check out the finished product. Now it's time for the actual purpose of this thing, the slime launcher, which is made a little like this. Quick demonstration for ya, basically the button triggers the piston, and for slime piston, this launches you up and the observer reads the piston and sends a signal to the second slime piston pushing you sideways. Let's try this thing out. Oh, I... I really thought this thing would launch you further than this. I... I just really thought it'd make it a lot further with this thing. Turns out air friction is really high in this game, meaning you lose all momentum when flying through the air, which is not good for me. Okay, since my slime launcher idea fell through, I'm thinking I'm gonna make a flying machine like right here, and then we'll travel that for a lot of the distance. Because if not, it's just gonna be like slime launcher, slime launcher, slime launcher, and that's gonna look bad. Flying machine guide with me right now, baby. Blop, splop. Okay, I always forget which way observers go when you place them, so here's hoping. <sighs> you know what? I never do anything right, dude. I always- I always mess up. I- I- I just can't do things. Well, the first time, man. There we go, baby. It's very not intuitive that the arrow points the other- Okay. Now I'm just messing myself up. We're gonna be quiet. Alright, and the way this works is that the trap door will trigger the observer, and we should be off. If you're gonna make this, make sure you do it with honey blocks because they squelch onto your feet. If you do it with slime blocks, you just, uh, fall off. Not epic. Noise. Now I'll need another slime launcher, but we don't just want to leave it out in the open. That'd look yucky. So I'm gonna build a cute miniature ship around it, perfectly sized to cover majority of the slime launcher. You gotta leave some blocks open to allow you to fly, so, you know, the slime sticking out is just an artistic touch. This slime launcher looks a bit different, and that's because it's just meant to send you horizontally. So instead of another ship, I'm gonna try to make it look like a bomb dropping down. My world is now canonically in the middle of a war. With those two done, I can now launch myself all the way into the bottom of the drink. Transportation is a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. This must be why the US public transport system is so terrible. But instead of another slime launcher or flying machine, I'm gonna add something a bit more goofy. A dolphin. These guys make you swim super fast, which is actually making it pretty annoying to grab the dolphin with the lead, but whatever. So they technically count as a transportation method in Minecraft. They have to stay in water, so moving them around the world sucks, but I should be able to just 
just fly him out like this. Yep, we're good so far. And he's gone. <sighs> take two, take two. Okay, if I rocket boost directly up, he won't fall off. I just have to drift horizontally, and we're good. And his name's going to be Blood. Hope you like your new home, buddy. You'll be confined to how far you can move on a lead for the rest of your life. Teehee, let's do the whole sequence together now. Wait blood disappeared. How is that even possible? Okay, I decked out his home a little more. Maybe he was offended that I just tied him up to a fence before. Now, let's do the whole sequence. All right, first lunch up to the flying machine. Good, good. Yeah, baby, now I'm living the good life. Second slime machine. Into the booper, down to the river, and mega fast swim. Hell yeah, baby, here we are. Also, side note, I had to add a bunch of light sources in my village, so mobs would- Ow! What is hitting me? Oh, great, and my demonstration of how I added lights so that a mob couldn't spawn, a spider jockey climbed my fence. Anyways, lamppost, bush lights. This is great. Just don't look over the fence. I think I'm gonna add some, like, haunted forest path with lanterns and such in the future, aka another project to add to the list that I won't do for a while. And that's it, we're done, boys! Oh, how do I get up to the ship? With my elytra, of course. I'm tired of these putting the ocean in the nether in Minecraft videos. We get it! I put an entire ocean in the nether in Minecraft Hardcore. How I flooded the nether. I flooded the nether in Minecraft Hardcore. How I transformed the nether in Minecraft. You can't trick me, buddy! I can see the water in the thumbnail! So how about instead, I put the nether into the ocean? They're actually all great videos, you should give them a watch. After this one, of course. Anyways, if you want to see how I built this massive nether chunk of over 50,000 blocks, stick around to the end of the video. First things first, we're gonna need a lot of netherrack. So I got my shulker boxes piled up, and we are ready to get mining, baby. Actually, thinking about it, I might as well go down to negative 15 so I can mine netherite at the same time. You know, two birds, one stone type of vibe. I'm kind of like the king of efficiency in Minecraft, what can I say? Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. Oh my god, now check this out. Mind all that? Yup, mind, yup. Come over here, shall we? Oh, you think you think this is it? Nope, turn around. Round this corner, around this bend. Yup, I made a little U-turn. Holy, is that a lot of zombie pigment right there? Yup, let me just give myself a little concussion real quick to get to the other side. It takes about five minutes. You can't even see the end yet. Oh, look at that. It expands farther than the eye can see. Hey, bro. Hey, hey, Ow, hey, hey, chill, chill, bro, chill, chill, bro. These guys are being mean to me. I'm leaving. Screw this place. See ya. And look at this. I got 13 netherite, baby. Shush. Oh, that can only make three netherite ingots. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, creepers can't one-shot me anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I have had eyes on the back of my head for creepers this whole series. Am I going to get a totem of undying soon? I mean... <laughs> Maybe. Sounds like a lot of work if you ask me. I like to live my life on the edge, right? I think this ocean is a nice little spot for a nether. Just imagine this, but like, um, red and hot, probably. I mean, I, I would just assume the nether's hot. Uh, s excuse me. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta leave. This is gonna take a while, so, uh, let's get started. What are little bros doing, though? They're taking a swim out to sea. Here, I'm just gonna add a little cave. It'll just add, like, depth around the place so it's not just a bunch of, like, flat surfaces. Now, this is POV, you are the cave. I will admit this is a terrible shot, though, so moving on. Now we got a pretty solid chunk of the nether out here. Just a whole lot of nether axe so far. But I actually copied this entire area from a chunk in my actual nether. And there should be a fortress right here. And as you can tell, there is no fortress. Which, you know what that means. It's time to build one. I'm gonna need a lot of nether bricks. Luckily, I know just a place to get some. And since I need to build a fortress, what better to do than just yoink a fortress? Turns out mining nether bricks actually takes a while and you can't put a beacon in the nether unless I wanted to go blow up the bedrock, which I don't. Luckily though, I love the sound of nether brick breaking. Just listen to that. 
such a nice little click. So for some reason, I decided to build this overlapping with this little chunk of land. Why I didn't just push this back a couple more blocks, I don't know, but we gotta remove it all. Go into the dirt, super easy, had to throw up a beacon for the stone, and mining out the rest of this went a little like this. So there's actually a basalt biome right next to the fortress, which was pretty lucky because I really didn't want it to just be like netherrack everywhere. I mean, yes, I can do my own custom biomes and I will, but first and foremost, basalt. Okay, genuine question though, uh, does basalt have like salt in it? Like, does it, does it kind of taste good if I lick it? <laughs> Ignore that, play the, play the time lapse. Now that we got the whole top done, I'm gonna start working on smoothing out the sides a bit. If I don't do that, it's just gonna be one big massive box, which isn't gonna look too good. We're gonna ignore how this part is one big massive flat spot. Uh, I'm not gonna try too hard. I'm not the best terraformer, as you can tell. So let's get started. So as we can see, it's a lot smoother, kind of like a hill on the side as I very carefully try to not show stuff that isn't linearly done in the video. Little known secret, I actually forget or don't think to film a lot of things that I should, but luckily I actually have world saves that have older stuff in it so I can go back in time and film stuff then, <laughs> or in this case just not show the other stuff. So if you ever notice that I'm like showing a clip in the same area but my inventory or levels are mismatched, now you know why, it's because I'm filming it at a complete different time. Now so that's not the same area, I want to add some different biomes in these areas. Like I'm thinking uh, Nylia, maybe some uh, soul sand valleys, I already got the basalt biome over here which looks pretty nice nice little contrast to the the netherrack biome what is that called wastelands i don't know but yeah a nice little little pop of trees should look pretty pretty sweet Now building that might look like it takes long, but it actually kind of just went like this. Yup, done in an instant. Did a little building off camera if you know what I mean. Well, besides the fact that I literally just built it all on camera. Now as we all know, the the nether has a lot of lava in it. That's that's like it's like distinguishing feature I'd say. So I'm gonna add a bit of that, but first since we are in the ocean, I have to block out the water. Because if I don't do that and I place the lava down, it's gonna turn into obsidian, which is gonna be very annoying to mine. So first step first, clear the water. And now that I'm basically finishing up on the bottom layer, I'm thinking I'm gonna go get sponges, which will be the quickest way to actually drain the water. Luckily, I know exactly where Guardian Temple is, which should have a bunch of sponges inside. Must say I'm having a little bit of difficulty finding the sponge room. Just gonna do a little bit of research real quick. <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be like where I looked? Um, about that, apparently not every single guardian temple has a sponge room, so I'm gonna have to go find another one real quick. Well, with my luck, this guardian temple also did not have a sponge room. <laughs> um, I'm too lazy to go find another one. Screw it, we're just gonna fill it all in with the dirt and then mine it out. Which, thinking about it, probably I would have been done with by now. But you win some, you lose some. I'm actually 500 IQ though, I just made a schematic for like a bunch of dirt on the ground so I can place it way quicker. I love mods. Now I could go to the nether and collect a bunch of lava, but I think it'll be a lot easier if I just have a lava generator right next to it that I can go back and forth and grab a bunch of lava for. Link to this farm will be in the description. All right, starting this up, we just gotta add in the last cauldron, hit a button, and it'll be circling around all the cauldrons. Um, it's, uh, it's not dripping? Um, <laughs> I don't really know how dripstones work, I don't- Do you need a certain block or something? Wait, no, it turns out I'm just stupid and I didn't have particle effects on. Now it's working, the lava will drip down into the cauldron, fill the cauldron up, and I should be able to yoink some free lava, let's go baby. So I AFK'd this all night, let's go ahead and see how many lava buckets we actually managed to get. Oh yeah, baby. Can't even open this. Oh, we're so stuffed. Wow, that is more than I thought it would be. But you will actually not believe what happened. So I AFK'd this last night. And basically what you have to do is just hold right click. And as you see, your lava bucket fills up. And normally it would drop in here whatever so i woke up last night at like 5 15 and i checked my computer to see if i could turn off my computer because i thought it'd be done by then i still had empty buckets in my hand so i couldn't 
couldn't cut it yet. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll go back to bed. But then I was laying in bed trying to sleep again. And I was thinking about it. Like once I fill up and once there's like a full one like that. Oh, I did not. My bad. I thought what would happen is that instead of, I actually just learned this now, instead of it re- filling this i thought it would place a lava here and kill me so i was like okay whatever i have enough i have to stop it so i got out back out of bed and as soon as i did that i i only had one bucket left which meant i was done okay did it mean i was done but the <laughs> I'm, I'm learning now that did not mean i was done it just meant for some reason it didn't work so it wasn't perfect timing. I'm just stupid. I'm glad we could figure that out together. Okay, let's go see how much of all this I can fill with those buckets. That dirt, dude. I was like, the lava, the lava will cover up all the, all the mistakes I made. Nope. It's a little short. <laughs> just like me. Ah! Ain't no way, bro. <laughs> It is a war zone in there. Holy. This is the last three buckets. And that's all we managed to do. <laughs> this is going to take a while. I think another full restack is just going to cover this area. But then we still got all of this to do. So we might have to cheat a little and just put some netherrack where lava will be. Because just getting that amount of lava took like five hours. And I don't have all day here. Ouchie. Yeah, that was God telling me to not be lazy. Sorry, God. I'm gonna be lazy anyways. So basically, I just went around all the edges and kind of just thickened up the nether rack a bit. Not majorly, but you know, any little bit helps. And also, instead of using the lava farm, which was great to AFK with overnight, it's a little too slow now to just wait. So I'm just gonna head to the nether and just grab a bunch of lava buckets from here. <laughs> Here I ran out of dirt to fill in the water in the back, so I decided to go by every other line so I could actually pick up the dirt that I'm mining. Because if I do it like this, all the dirt falls in the lava. <laughs> now this was a major waste of time because it was a lot easier to just eventually go and get dirt, which I do soon. But in the moment, I was too lazy to go do it, which really just shows you that you should do now what can be- Wait, no, that's not the quote. Sorry, I was trying to quote Master Wu from Ninjago. Do to do today what could be put off to tomorrow or something like that i don't know never put off until tomorrow what can be done today i hope that motivated you though you know thinking about it you could sub tomorrow but you should sub to my channel today smile Last thing I want to do is add a little house right here. This side is looking a bit bare, so I think just having a structure here will, you know, really complete the build. And we're going to work with a nice nether color scheme. Didn't use the warp stem anywhere so far, so adding a little pop of blue in won't hurt anybody. Let's build this thing. All right, now we got this massive nether chunk in the middle of the ocean for truly no reason other than I thought it would be a funny play on the ocean and nether trend. Got this huge fortress, got a little baby soul sand valley, nether portal with the corners filled in because this one's purely for aesthetic and not function. Got the crimson forest, a little blue dabby dee dabba doo house, and some massive lava pools to really heat the this place up and now with that done as the sun sets make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this one check out my other videos if you enjoyed this one and bye bye this is my cactus farm pathetic by the end of this video i am going to have a way 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 bigger one and i'm also going to decorate it way too much because i have nothing better to do here's the desired location nice big chunk of sand basically we're gonna outline a huge area here and then build in a bunch of farm for these guys. What you looking at, tough guy? Huh, what you- Ow! These guys are mean. Let's- let's get digging. I've been at it for 40 minutes now, and this is the progress I've made, but my tools are hurting, so I'm gonna have to get a couple of replacements for those. I am really regretting not picking a more flat spot for this. The nice part is that I'm getting a bunch of sand and sandstone. Since that is what my build is gonna be mostly made of, I thought I was gonna have to make a sand duplication machine, but it's looking like that's not gonna be the case, hopefully. Teehee, don't make me do extra work, please. Yo, Enderman farms are insane, dude. I can't even see the tool. It's repairing so fast. 
fast. Mining in the desert is great because all the blocks are already insta mine, meaning I don't need to bring a beacon everywhere. Building a beacon is kind of like that one meme where one side of the bus, the guy is like really sad and the other side he's happy. Me when having to build and break beacon. Me when using beacon. Actually ignore everything I said. This tower is so big I hit stone. I'm gonna toss up a beacon. Check it out. That actually took kind of less time than expected. And these are all the chests I filled up with sand and sandstone. 19 double chest. Sheesh. Hopefully that's enough for this whole project. <laughs> Last thing I want to be doing right now is mining sand. Oh, I should, I should cover this hole, huh? Now that is a gosh darn filled hole, if I do say so myself. Now it's time to get building. We're gonna need a lot of materials. I'm gonna go ahead and collect all the wood I need for the project. So I'm just gonna make one big mega tree and hope that supplements me for this whole thing. Should I add some girth? Sorry, I'll just, I'll just make the tree. Wait, I'm so, oh my God. Trees need like extra, extra dirt to make <sighs> thought i'd do it by my beacon but i guess i'll move okay this should work okay yes <laughs> thank you it it's still not working <laughs> oh my god this is this is gonna be the hardest part of this project i could have sworn i saw a tiktok where somebody did this you nope <laughs> you nope okay you nope you nope you? Nope. Are they broken? Is it the grass? Does the grass make you upset? Oh! <laughs> Boom, baby! Sorry, I didn't think the grass would make a tree not be able to grow. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm going to muck lose it. Oh good, one of them grew by themselves in the time it took me to just bone meal some trees. Sir, Operation Mega Tree is a bust. We're gonna have to do this one at a time. Just, just start the time lapse. Okay, no, we're back. I, I refuse to accept it. I tested it in a super flat world. Okay, the Mega Tree exists. I'm not- I'm not schizophrenic, it's real, and I'm doing it. We can build huge tree. I wish I could make this whole build with normal sandstone, but unfortunately the texture in my opinion is like a little too busy for a large scale build. So I'm gonna have to turn most of it into smooth sandstone. I do have a super smelter already, but I'm gonna make a bigger one. The reason I'm making such a big one is I did the math and it sounds incorrect, but it's really simple math and I'm an engineering major. So it'd be really embarrassing if I got this wrong. But since I need 23,000 smooth sandstone, that that would be like eight hours a smelting if I used my super smelter with only eight furnaces. So I'm gonna cut that time down a little by just building one of these. Right, I got it ready to go, all the sandstone stacked up. I'm gonna try out lava buckets because I really do not have a lot of coal. And lava apparently does one hundred? That's crazy. So yeah, I'm gonna work on filling up these buckets and AFK here a while. Some of these are still cooking, but we got quite a lot of smooth sandstone. All those down there, nice and full up. So we might as well get started on the cacti farm. I'm gonna do a quick little tutorial. We just had to lay out the sand in this pattern. And then since there'll be three other quadrants here, this will be the middle block. So from there, you're gonna dig... My pickaxe is too fast. <laughs> you wanna dig one block holes between the sands of just these two lines. So this four by four is basically the little quadrant. So we need to dig one more hole in the middle of it right there. Next up with the block, we're just gonna put a border around this. 
And then you're gonna wanna grab gates and put an open one over each of the holes you dug. You can skip the middle one. And then we're gonna add our cacti and then a fence in between them. This basically makes it so that when the cactus grows, it'll pop off and then fall down. And then you're gonna wanna put water at each corner. And just like that, you got yourself a nice little cactus farm. Yeah, we're gonna be building a lot more of these. So I actually have Cade for, I honestly forgot, maybe an hour. I didn't go crazy on the farms yet because I did not have enough cactus to fill up the whole place. As you can see, I set up a collection system. Just to show you how that works, basically there is just a bunch of packed ice with water streams. And those just collect all the holes we made. And I think, yep, they all track down here to a water elevator, which goes back up to the chest. Let's get back to making some farms. Back to material collecting. I'm here in the mangrove swamp, and I must say, collecting mangrove wood is the worst wood to collect. I mean, bruh, look at what I'm doing right now, dude. I am foraging through the leaves to get like two pieces of wood. Honestly, at this point, I'm kind of losing my mind and getting very bored of this. So I'm just gonna suffer until I have just enough wood and then get out of here. I collected some mud in the mangrove swamp and now I'm gonna need some wheat because if you put those two together, you get yourself some packed mud. Luckily, I have this wheat farm that is not a farm at all. It's purely for aesthetic, but it'll do. While my wheat regrows, I think I found the best way to farm mangrove trees. So basically, you're gonna wanna put a TNT down let it explode, expose a bunch of wood. This tree is kind of thick, so you might need to use multiple TNT to really get to the thick of it. You are still going to have to mine up these little branches alone. Little inconvenient, but it's a lot quicker with the leaves out of the way. So once it starts getting really thick again, you're going to want to put another TNT. And as you can see, this one exposed a lot of wood. So you're basically pretty good at this point to just pick off all the little extra mangrove woods. So I can get like two stacks of this way quicker than just mining them one at a time which gets you like maybe 20. <laughs> then once the tree is basically all mined up, you're gonna wanna wait a little for the saplings to drop. And then once that's done, I like to just light the roots on fire so I don't have to deal with them. And you'll have mangrove in no time. We are finally ready to get building. And all we need is all 24 of these shulker boxes filled to the brim with materials. This is gonna be a lot of work, but should be fun. So uh, let's get building. Check it out. The walls are complete. This place is w way huger than I thought it was. Got these nice little towers, big old arch coming in. And next up, we're going to build a kind of like palace around all the cactus to cover it up. And also just because, you know, it'll look cool. You know, this whole time I've been building, I've been seeing this tree. How did this spawn here? Did Minecraft change? I could have sworn trees can't spawn in the, in the, in the desert. Is this like I've been here so long i'm so hot i'm like having a hallucination is it like technically another biome no it's still desert huh Back to the building, this thing was kind of hard to design because it has to be such a large box to cover the cacti. Normally when designing builds, I have a lot smaller shapes to have individual designs on them because that just fits my building style better. So I try my best. So we got kind of the box of the palace done. I'm still going to add a bunch of towers, second floor, the whole shebang. But if you haven't noticed, the floor here is a little... A little yucky. Unfortunately, this was all under a mountain, so instead of it being the top layer and being sand, it's sandstone, which is not the look we're going for. I'm gonna go ahead and tear it all out and replace it with a bunch of sand. Yippee, this should be so fun. Now that the floor isn't bothering me anymore, we can get back to working on our palace. I'm gonna show the first tower I'm making, but I feel like you've seen enough towers by now that I'm just gonna skip past recording the other ones. Holy well, yeah, gosh darn, look at them towers. I am 
towered out. There have been many towers in the creation of this build, and I am done with them. Sir, the 24th tower has hit this build. Now there's one part of this area where you can really see a gap, and that's what we're gonna build next. Really coming together now. It's a pretty simple build. As you can see, the only real bit of details is this area and, you know, this stuff. But I'm gonna be adding a little, little spice around, just like, maybe like an armory right there, you know, that type of deal. Maybe that can interest the eye rather than the walls, because I wasn't really sure what to do with all of this. Since it's quite, like, stacked and there's a lot of them, I feel like if I added details, it would just be, like, a lot. I feel like from far away, it would just end up looking bad. So, yeah, we're just gonna leave it nice and basic like that. I think it looks pretty cool. But if we come around the back here, you will see a similar shape. <laughs> you thought we were done with towers. No, no, no. You silly little guy. We got one more back corner. I'm not even gonna film it. Screw it. You'll see it in the next clip or something. <laughs> It'll be there. So anyways, building this armory will uh go something like this. Okay, I did most of that off camera because I feel like we've been building a lot. <laughs> so let's go on a little tour. I added in this path with the wall. Very nice. Kind of leads you into the chest because if we take a step around here, you know, it's not very built on the inside. But with the wall, I feel like, yep, you go to the chest and you leave. You're good. I left this side empty because I think I might add a sugarcane farm eventually and by eventually i mean probably gonna end up being never but it's good to have options coming down this path we added a little oasis in case you want to dip your toes get the staircase up to the cafe up here we got a little garden you know sit rest we got an archery field which is fun you know grab one of these arch away i actually did this by accident oh wait this is my only arrow here um i don't know any more arrows do i well, if I take this arrow, I'm gonna be out of arrows, but since they're target blocks, it, like, goes up when you hit it. It's cool. It's cool. Around the back here, we got the grill. Yeah, slap some meat on it. Hey, man, brother. Little keg for some drinks. And, yeah, that's the building finished up. But if we look inside, I think we got some more room for some cactus farms. You already know what's coming. Do the thing. Yeah, baby. We got another layer added on top in this side. Since we had to build more down here for the sand, it only fit half of it in, but half's better than nothing. And there's another one on that side. But with that complete, we are done with the cactus farm. This place is huge huge let's just look at this place like flying in this place is probably the biggest build i've done in minecraft <laughs> oh it is so cool though let's go ahead and look at how many cactus we've gotten just from building this which took me about uh, like 150 in game days that's one two three almost four full chest which is what like something over 200 stacks of cactus which is probably more cactus than i'll ever have to use i love watching the cactus go down here <laughs> cactus go room and with that we are at the end of this video make sure to like and subscribe if you got into the end of this video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye bye mojang still hasn't added penguins to minecraft we got these guys but no penguins are you kidding me oh what is that oh my god his bloodlust is insatiable okay i'm out of here this is about the best that you would normally get from minecraft and he's still pretty small and i mean being a penguin is kind of like my whole thing my profile picks a penguin my skin's a penguin so we're gonna have to fix this by making a way larger penguin and this is going to be the world's largest penguin in minecraft with a hidden base below it equipped with everything a penguin could want let's go ahead and make an outline to give you guys an idea of how big this thing is gonna be All right, all right, all right. Let's check this out. And yep. <laughs> this thing is huge. Um, squid for com oh, uh, dolphin for comparison. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of blocks. About thirty thousand, in fact, which is pretty close to nine double chest full. Oh.
Ignore ignore that I missed that. It's okay. I can get back up. Watch this. Oh. No, I, I swear you can't. Watch, 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 watch. Watch, watch, watch. Yup, yup. <laughs> make that make sense, okay? But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need to collect a lot of materials. The material list is a little wacky. I mean, there's some stuff I can't even get. Like, it wants me to get bedrock. Um, you can't collect that in survival, buddy. And look at this. I need one jungle wood. Is that really gonna be the make or break for this thing? Normally, I would just commit crimes against the environment and chop down a forest for wood. But in my last video, I found out that. Farming acacia is pretty annoying since it's all like goes out and there's not many wood and then you have to keep making trees. It's just annoying. I'm gonna build a tree farm. I don't even have a bone farm, so I'm gonna have to go to the nether and collect a bunch of bone blocks, but whatever. It'll do what needs to be done for, for this project. And then we worry about everything else in the future. So let's just build this thing. I just finished building this thing, but I haven't tested it yet. We will do that live together as a group because we have this little TNT duplicator. And I'm very scared I built something wrong because if I did, kabloomy. Gotta flip be this and then TNT. Yup. 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 All right. Infinite wood. Look at that. We've only been here for like a minute. Let's go ahead and put down all the chests we're gonna need to fill. So now we know once we fill up all of these, we'll have collected all the materials we need for this build. All right, that's a little over one eighth of the way done. Now the next material we're gonna need the most of is light gray terracotta, which I hope spawns naturally. But let's go ahead over to the Badlands to find out. We should be able to teleport there if I just do something like this. And we're there. And I believe that is gray terracotta. Please, 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 please. Yes, all right, yippee. We're gonna set up a beacon and vroom, 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 vroom. I am just so thankful I have a bunch of random little farms everywhere because if I had to go find a guardian temple for 27 dark prismarine, I'd be pissed. Instead, we can come right here and get the stuff we need for it. Because I'm so smart, we are saved. I was just about to get started on collecting a bunch of bookshelves. But if you think about it, because our pixel art is flat, we're only gonna see the top of the bookshelf, not the side like it was supposed to be. And if we just place a little old plank right here, you'll notice some similarities. So instead of all those bookshelves, I'm just gonna use planks. Good thing we built that wood farm, huh? The next big item I need is nearly 3,000 light gray wool. And I have this sheep farm, which I did for a product which I needed a lot of red wool for. <laughs> so it's not very diverse in here. And I'm not about to make it so. So we're just going to change a bunch of these to light gray and a couple to gray. And probably AFK here a while because these guys are slow. I mean, look at some of these guys sitting here. He's been here a while. I know you have, buddy. It's time to eat. And the worst part is, is I can't even dye them while they're already shaved. I'm just gonna sit here and wait. Last things last, I gotta mine up a bunch of andesite and granite. Now that we got everything, we are ready to get building. Finally. There's such a weird arrangement of blocks that I'm not even sure how to get started on holding these in my inventory. But I guess I'll just put random stuff in there and <laughs> hope for the best. This will be cute. Let's place our first block together. Boom. Yup, you can really see it coming along now. We just got another 30,000 blocks to place. You can't even see the end with my render distance right now. Pray for me. We got the first five layers done, and it's looking like a whole lot of nothing so far. Absolutely nothing about this makes it able for you to distinguish that it's supposed to be a penguin. So annoying, though. There's so many random blocks that I keep having to run off to my chest to go get new ones, because my, my poor little inventory can only hold so much. But no point dilly-dallying. Let's just get right back into it. This is a special moment I wanted all of you guys here for. This block is where the one 
jungle log I had to get goes. That's it. That's gonna make all the difference. You can really see how it stands out from up here. I've already lost it. Oh, there it is. And while I have you guys here, you may be thinking that this is in no way gonna be a penguin. Don't worry, it'll get there. This kind of looks like one of his little feats already, but I might just be saying that because I know what it's supposed to look like at the end, so my mind is filling in the blanks, but just, just stay with me here. Just stay with me. I'm having to put a layer of dirt under some of this because there is a lot of gravel in this section. All of these empty spots are where gravel is supposed to be. And if we just put our gravel in now, it'll drop to the ocean floor. Building this in an ocean, by the way, because it's the only place that's flat. Clearing this big of an area would have taken me until my retirement. But now I got two goofy ah uh, things in this ocean, so I guess I'm just gonna keep putting just random stuff in this ocean until it looks super filled up and cool. But yeah, let's go ahead and finish placing in this gravel. Gravel's all in and I think it's starting to take shape a little. It's looking like the the squishy little butt part of a penguin. Just if you if you squint squint real hard. <laughs> I've been working for probably about an hour. Honestly, the most annoying part is having to run back to go grab the one block I needed in that one specific area, but I kind of feel like a printer while doing this. I'm just like, vroom, vroom, vroom. and it looks like we're about maybe a tenth of the way done, so I'm, I'm gonna get back to printing. And we are 50% done! Actually, more than 50% on just blocks placed because he's a chunky boy, but he gets a bit thinner at the top, and once it's just his head, it's a lot less thick than this body. It is starting to look pretty good, though. You can see the flippers taking shape, and I think his feet are a lot more obvious with a bit more of the body in place. Down here, though, nothing. No comprehension. What? This is a penguin, you say? Luckily, though, this later part of the build is getting a lot easier. There's a lot more of these huge spaces of one block type. At the start, look at the- look at this. Look at this chunk. There is one block that is the same type. That is eight different blocks I have to go to my inventory to get so that I can place them. Very inconvenient. But over here, it's just like granite, 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 granite. Easy. And since this is the middle part, I'm thinking that the little underground base is gonna have its entrance right about here. Or maybe the head. I haven't really decided yet. The head might be a little, a little gruesome though. Like I'm just like busting into his brain. <laughs> but that's for future me to figure out. So let's just keep on working. It's really coming together now. We're about to get started on the head back there. My favorite thing about this build is like the one little random block, like that jukebox right there. Yeah, this really brought the build together. This little guy right here. What would I have done if I didn't collect those seven jukeboxes, dude? Ugh, it would have been ruined. Dude, the one jungle plank that I needed. I would just <laughs> scrap the whole build without this guy. But yeah, let's get this head completed. And let me go pick up my helmet. I, I'm out of inventory space, so I had to drop it to do that. It, it looked cool, I hope. Like, good imagery, um, because I said head, and then I showed my penguin head, and it, it's nighttime, so I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go to bed. Good night! And just like that, we are done, baby. Yippee! We have really wiped ourselves out of materials. But I must say, I think it is worth it. Look at this dude. It is so weirdly detailed. <laughs> you hardly ever see anything look quite like this in Minecraft. Does he... does he look like me? 
Could we be brothers? Now all we've got to do is, you know, get rid of this outline and add our little hideout base underneath them. Oh, it's going to be so cool. We're going to have little penguins. It's going to be nice and cold. Ugh, it's just so hot. I forgot that I took off my elytra. I was so confused and I was... Two blocks away from this sandstone, dude, I would have splatted. <laughs> I really need to get some totems of undying, but I am lazy, smile. I don't even remember what I was talking about. The base? Yeah, it it'll be cool. You'll see it soon. I'm working on clearing this thing at night time, and there are so many mobs. Hey guys, welcome to my mob farm tutorial. First thing you gotta do is build a 30,000 block large penguin. Ah! Stop! Oh my god, they're aggressive, dude. I'm just gonna pretend they're not there and get back to clearing this thing. I'm just gonna add in a wall because if I didn't, our underground base would be very wet. Draining water is probably the least fun thing to do in this game, but I'm thinking because it's such a small area, maybe I can just get away with spamming sponges everywhere. Here's hoping. No, yeah, that worked horribly. We're probably gonna have to section it off, I think, which sucks, but what can you do? So I sectioned it off, and this should go a lot better. As you can see, the water's actually staying away now, except for this little guy. Uh, this process still takes forever, though. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut the recording because this is just too painful. I don't want you guys to witness it. I don't want to be witnessed while doing it. Just at a snap of my fingers, this whole place is gonna be clear. So yeah, all the water's cleared out. Ignore the torches. They are temporary. I just need to be able to see. But that'll get fixed up soon. First things first, we're gonna build a little penguin house right here. It's gonna be so cute. Check this out. We just got to do the white part of his body. Then we'll add his little feet. Right here will be the doors to get in. The little yellow part on the tip of his tummy. And then for his flippers and head, we're just going to place a whole lot of blue terracotta. Back here, we're going to add a little tail. Oh, and if we jump really high, we can finish filling in his head. Oh, oh, <laughs> God, it sucks being short. And last but not least, we're gonna add on his eyes. And just a little flair. You know, he's got that cool hairstyle going on, slicked back. And if we copy that onto the other side... And I did forget the beak. That's embarrassing. Let me just do that. And we got ourselves a cute little penguin house. Look at him. He's so adorable. I just want to squeeze his little cheek. And if we go inside, I'm not the biggest interior designer in the world, so I am not going to super try hard this. We'll just add a little table, a bed, a little bit of light, and we'll put a bedside table and boom, little house. Just uh, remember to wear your socks because the, the floor is cold. Now that we made big guy, I'm gonna make a little guy so that he can have a friend. Bing bong, there he is. Oh my god, he is also so I can't get- I, I just can't get over how cute they are, dude. Now we really got a full ranging scale of penguins. We got little old me, little baby chunk, me as size comparison. We got big chunk, can't even fit him in the frame. Let me just- Crank my neck. There he is. And we can't forget. Ow. Ow. Okay. Let me put on my armor. Eat up. And we can't forget about Big Chunk. Big Mega Chunk. It's his world, and we're all just living inside his belly. Ow. Anyways, enough dilly dallying. Let's get back to work. It is pretty chilly in here, so I'm gonna add. Oh! What in the world, dude? Oh my god, Big Chunk, what did he do to you? <laughs> Alright, we're gonna fix this up. That was tragic. <laughs> and just like that, we're fixed up. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. Let's go ahead and add in some finishing details. And we are done! We got a nice little igloo, our penguins, our campfire, and I added these to the roofs because once we close up that hole, it's gonna be quite dark in here, and they're supposed to just look like icicles hanging from the roof. I think it- I think it does the job pretty nice, but to avoid that creeper situation happening again, let's go ahead and add in a hidden door here. Ugh, 
Yes. I don't know how that didn't bonk my head, but <laughs> I guess my helmet is pretty hard. Anyways, to build a hidden trap door, you just gotta do a little something like this. Pistons to extend out, pistons to extend up, red stone repeaters, and a little bit of dust. Ooh, ignore that. And a little bit of dust. Then we'll want to connect those up to this torch. Coming onto the other side, we will just connect the redstone up into these blocks. And then we'll want to repeat the same thing on the other side. And if we just replace these blocks, slap down some pressure plates right here. Oh, um, uh, right here? Nope, um, surely right here. Nope, um, as I was saying, right there. Yeah, baby! And here we are! Epic hangout time! And just like that, we have built the world's largest penguin in hardcore Minecraft. If you guys made it to this point in the video, thank you so much. Please consider hitting that subscribe and like button, and I will see you boys in the next one. Bye-bye!